Hey Dynamo guys, I hope everything's going well. I uh, hope you guys are staying safe, uh, that you're keeping yourself busy. Uh, for sure, we're giving you these sessions uh, twice a week to give you something to do in the backyard. Keep on working hard. Um, we're looking forward to getting back out on the field as soon as possible. This is the sixth session we're sending out to you guys. Uh, we'll be talking about the third man concept. Uh, Coach Johnny will be talking about the winger play, the seven and 11. Uh, also, be talking about some goalkeeper training and goalkeeping things you could be doing as well for our goalkeepers. Uh, also, we'll be talking about defensive skills and what you need to be uh, to better your, your defensive uh, posture and, and uh, better defending. And then also be working on some fitness. Definitely make sure you're working on your fitness, keeping your cardio up uh, and so forth. So when we're able to come back out and play again, you're ready to go, guys. Uh, keep on working hard, guys. Keep on training, persevering through this uh, the coronavirus uh, uh, being out for so long. Uh, obviously, it's trying for everybody. We all want to be back on the fields playing as soon as possible. But we really feel this is the next best thing for you guys to be doing is training at home, working individually. So when we do make it back out to the fields, you're ready to go. Guys, keep up the good work. Forever Orange. Go Dynamo. So the concept of the third man, uh, where the objective is to create a positional superiority. So before we can play with the third man, we need to have a good structure on the field for making triangles, like, like we just talked on the last video. And obviously the idea is to attract with the possession of the ball, the, play, the other players to come. So you will isolate the players that you want to find from the opponent. It means like, for example, our number five here will be the first man, our number 10 will be the second and our number six will be the target. We want to find number six facing forward will be the third man. As you can see, it's a good order to progress. We can do the same playing for sides. Number five, number 10, playing to number two who will be the third man. And then we can play forward. That's very difficult to defend. Here, let's see an example of a practice on the third man. Now you can see the player who has the ball played the second player and then we find the third player facing forward just as the video clip that we just showed you let's see it again first second and third now let's see what barcelona in the good in the great years what they can do with this to. Okay, let's see it again. Focus on the most important thing is the player who is facing our goalkeeper. He is not turning with the ball, he's just playing the way he's faced to somebody who is in better position and facing forward. Let's have a look again. Easy, forward, easy, forward, easy, forward. Why this is important? Because we can build up proper with this concept I'm gonna break all the lines. Let's see again Luisiana crew playing in Austin. Okay. So now let's see the game. Focus on that moment, the fullback get the ball, number 6 drop to get the ball, epicenter, fight for the center mid, who doesn't turn, play the way he's face. now we can progress again, play the way he face. we can progress again, after short passes in one side, we try to find the other side. Okay, so let's see if we understand this crucial concept, play good soccer. We're gonna pick up again an example with the 9v9, but you can apply it on a 7v7, you can play in 4v4, or obviously in 9v11. Now the keeper will find our left center back or number four. And let's see the options that this player has. Obviously, our full back three and our center mid six is not a real option because the defenders are very close to them, so will provoke a mistake. This option to pass to this center back is very risky because if the striker picks up the ball, we just have the keeper to save it. The option to play forward in not a long or aerial ball is very difficult. It's a difficult pass because there are two players that can intercept the ball on the central corridor and make a counter attack. 
So besides the long ball on this page, that is not always easy to do, what will be the next option? Another option that we have, and if you remember it, if not, have a look again on the video session number one that we sent on this break, and you will see the 2v1s because number four and number three can create a 2v1 easy. But if we decide to pass number eight, this is the question. Who will be the third man now? Yes. Number three, if he or she is paying attention, he can start running on the, when the ball is traveling to number eight. And we can find her or him fading forward. The same with number six. If you pick up number six, it's another option. It's good too. The idea, again, find number three. Now facing forward with no position. Or find number six facing forward with no position. I hope you get it and I hope you understand it. Thank you for your attention. Hey guys, Johnny here with the uh, Dynamo Juniors. Uh, next day we're going to be talking about the uh, characteristics, roles and responsibilities of the players. We're now going to be moving higher up the field. We're going to be talking uh, over the next couple of videos about the uh, attacking midfield player, the number 10. We're going to talk about the striker, the number 9. But right now we're going to talk about the 7 and the 11, the wide attacking uh, players or the wide midfield players, depending on what system of play you've got. I've set things up again in a 4-3-3 system of play, so we're going to talk about the right-sided uh, forward, which is the number 7, we're going to talk about the left-sided forward, uh, the number 11. Uh, again, Cristiano Ronaldo, number 7, right-hand side, Gareth Bale, uh, the lefty on the left-hand side. Okay, so some of the attacking characteristics. Our team has possession of the ball. What are we looking for from our 7-11? Two main features that we're looking for. We're looking for them to get wide maybe as wide as we can, all the way to the touchline, and we're looking for them to get high, to provide height for the team. So we're stretching the field wide, we're stretching the field high, making... ...as difficult as possible for the opposition defensive group to defend these guys. So when we get the ball, provide the width, provide the height if you're playing in the 7 and 11. We are looking for these guys to be making penetrating runs without the ball. So can we get behind the defensive line and connect with teammates? When we have possession of the ball, we are looking to see if we can isolate 1v1 scenarios. When we create those 1v1 scenarios, can we then take our opponent on and then be creative when we get into that final third? It doesn't matter so much if we make mistakes and lose the ball here. We're 7,500 yards from goal. This is a fine area to make a mistake because something good may come from it. So be positive, particularly in these 1v1 scenarios. If there's opportunities for combination plays to combine with our teammates, fine. But when it becomes a 1v1 situation, space in behind, let's be positive and see if we can take our, our opponent on. When we get into these areas, now it becomes about decision making. Are we going to shoot? Are we going to dribble? Are we going to cross? Are we going to get to the end line and provide a little cutback? A lot of different options. Uh, but we're looking for that 7 and the 11 to make sure that they are able to not only be creative in the final third, but also then to either score or connect with teammates in the, in the final third. What we often see from our front three and maybe the attacking midfield player as well is a little bit of positional rotation. So maybe this guy comes in and our friend goes out. We like that positional rotation. Maybe you don't stay there forever, but it's something that we can think about. Uh, interchanging with our teammates uh, is excellent. And then we need to stay connected to the play. So let's say we're over here. This guy has the ball on number seven. He gets past his opponent. There's no point us now continuing to provide the width. Now is the opportunity for us to narrow and get ourselves into a dangerous area. So you need to figure out when is the right time to provide the width, when is the right time to provide the height, and when is the right time to narrow and get yourself into goal-scoring opportunities. Because that's the main function of our 7 and 11, is to create and score in the final third. Okay, defensively, out of possession, these guys have responsibility. Often you'll see uh, these guys, the 9, 7, and 11, will be asked to press the build-up from the opposition. So their starting position is going to be very high, looking for mistakes and turnovers in this area of the field where they can go direct to goal. Equally, on the loss of possession in this zone, 
the coach might be asking you to counter press, whereas if the ball is lost, we're expecting players to come and try and win the ball back quickly before the opposition can get their attacking principles organized. So pressing and counter pressing, definitely a responsibility, a characteristic of our 7 and 11 out of possession. Okay? Uh, one thing to consider, again, out of possession, is you do have defensive responsibility. So figure out who your immediate opponent is. The 7 and the 11, more likely your immediate opponent, your defensive responsibility will be the opposition fullback. So if your opposition fullback is now penetrating, that is your responsibility to shut him down. Unless your coach asks you otherwise, stay high, cheat a little bit, and we'll deal with that as a team ready for our own counter-attack. You have defensive responsibility, most likely the two and the three, the fullbacks on the opposition team. So, in a concept, seven and eleven. The seven is on the right hand side, eleven on the left hand side, creative in the attacking third. 1v1s, crosses, goal scoring situations, runs in behind. Uh, out of possession, pressing, counter pressing, and understand your immediate opponent because you do have defensive responsibility. So, there you go. 7 and 11, those are your characteristics. Thanks very much. Sure. Foot, 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 foot. Bop, set, catch. I pedal back. Foot, 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 foot. Set. I pedal back. Everything's on your toes. Everyone's on the foot. Set, set. Catch. You can vary the service from high, medium, and low. thing we're going to work on is jockeying. Jockeying is very important for the first defender to be able to do. That's very uh, important to make sure that we keep everything in front of us, that uh, there is little to no penetration from the attackers, okay? And uh, we'll keep it very simple and work on, on, some, on, on a few repetitions. You can get three to five, seven, 10 repetitions at a time, okay? It's also good for your stamina, okay? And so, here we go. Notice how I'm keeping my head up, I'm balancing myself, I'm not going forward too much, I'm not leaning back too much, I'm staying here, I'm staying balanced as I'm keeping everything in front of me. I want you to get get up a little bit here. Don't lean forward. Don't lean back. Stay here. Stay bound. Look. Light on your feet as you're jockeying that defender. Okay? We'll give it a try. See how it looks.
this last one here, we're gonna work on some defending in the air. You wanna make sure you strike the ball with power and try to get some distance on it. And last thing, we don't know where we're we going to go back again at fields. So let's do a little bit of running depending on your age. It's going to keep you sharper. It's going to keep you health physically and mentally because running makes you happy. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe. First is first. Stay with the family, guys.